you can go ahead and write on their LinkedIn a recommendation, right? Do it, do it for each other in your, whether it's a student group or you know, you're in a sorority together, look out for each other in that way. Because people are always much more impressed by a LinkedIn profile that has those endorsements and recommendations on it. So when you're sharing your profile, or, or when you're editing your profile, I should say, please make sure you go into the settings tab and you mark it as no to share your profile edits live. Because what happens, uh, people get new jobs, they kind of forget to update their LinkedIn, and then they, they change their LinkedIn, and then all these announcements start going into my feed, because I'm connected with you, that you just got a new job as a concierge at the Peabody, but oh my goodness, you've been in that role for eight years now, <laughs> or eight months or whatever, and I'm just getting the announcement. I'm gonna send you a message saying, hey, congrats on the new job. And then you're gonna be like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I've actually been doing this for a while. So I've seen this mistake a whole lot. So pay attention to the settings on LinkedIn and make sure that that sharing your profile edits is clicked to no. Okay. Because it just seems like students and people in general don't stay on top of that. So that's what I do so that I don't make that mistake. Right? All of your contacts are gonna see every change you make if you don't set it to no. It, it like kind of gives an alert on your feed. So you're trying to go like that, right? You can change it back to yes after you finish making your edits. It's fine. Um, set your status for job seeking to yes if you're seeking opportunities. Why? Because that tells the recruiters who are on LinkedIn this person is looking Yes, I should reach out to him or her. But if you set it to no, they're gonna be hesitant to reach out to you. Um, the other key point about LinkedIn, and I'm gonna have you learn from another student's mistake. The minute you create your LinkedIn profile, commit to being on that platform once or twice a week at minimum. Right? There was a student few years ago she graduated, she developed her LinkedIn profile and then she forgot about it. Marriott Voyager program, like the recruiter, was reaching out to her. She wasn't checking it. Missed opportunity. Right? Because she went back like I think it was like seven months later. She was like, oh, what should I do, Miss Martin? I'm like, you know what you can do. Like you have to act in a timely manner. So the minute you have that LinkedIn profile, you have to commit to taking care of it, right? So LinkedIn isn't Facebook. You should definitely have a high quality photo because it's seven times more likely to be viewed and accepted if you're trying to connect with someone if you have a quality headshot, right? So for this class in two weeks, because you will come professionally dressed to the mock interview, if you do not have a headshot, I'm gonna try to set up outside or somewhere and just bring the camera so that I can take some photos of you when you're dressed and I'll send you the photos. Um, just for this class, I'm gonna bring this photo to school. Right. So if you do not have a headshot and you need one, it's not gonna be edited. You're gonna have to edit it yourself. I'm just gonna take the picture with the camera. The camera takes pretty good pictures. So, you have a question about that? Uh, well, I have a question. Are you gonna be at the CT thing tomorrow? Yes, I will be there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so be professionally dressed and smile. Like some people are like, like I want to hire that person. You know what I mean? I want to hire the person who speaks our brand, hospitality, right? So it's smile. You don't have to be like that either, because that's a bit too much, right? Just a natural smile, right? So no party shots, cartoon avatars, unless you're in graphic design that's accepted in graphic design. Uh, group photos or puppy pics, it's a really clear background, all right? It's professional. That's what you're going for. Right. So your headline has to be informative. It should be short. A professional slogan works. Um, honor students seeking marketing position. That, that speaks to what your intention is, right? So think about what you want your headline to say. 
check out profiles of students and recent alumni or people that you admire in the industry, and that's another way to get ideas. Your summary, this is where I said, like, if you put in your information, your experience, LinkedIn will kind of start crafting your summary for you. The first 220 words really, really count. Some people go way too long, and no one's reading it. I'm just letting you know. So the first 220 words to count, be concise and confident about your qualifications and goals. Include any relevant work or extracurriculars, and tell the readers how to contact you if you want to be contacted, all right? So I don't want to be contacted by recruiters right now because I'm not looking for job, right? <laughs> But if I am looking for something, I will say, please reach me at whatever, you know, most likely it'll be an email for me because I don't want to get it on my cell phone. Right. So in your education section, it's a lot of what you've already done on your resume. You're including your education, your majors, study abroad. You're not, you can't be shy about that stuff. LinkedIn is cool because you can go beyond the one page. So say you're an international student and you had to take a TOEFL test, right? Like you can put your TOEFL score on LinkedIn, whereas maybe you didn't put it on your resume. Who knows, right? Or if you've done extra certifications that didn't fit, or you won extra awards and honors that couldn't fit on that one page because we're advising you to have that one, no more than two page resume, right? LinkedIn, you can go on and on. You don't have to limit yourself, right? So the top three skills are the most important when it comes to the skills section. Include key words and like the phrases that you know recruiters from your industry are seeking. Right? So in hospitality, what's one of those key words that you know they're seeking? Most of you should, I think most of you actually have it on your resume. Mm -hmm. Customer service, right? Or guest interaction. Right? That's one of those skills that you should have on there. Right? If you're going into tech, you should have the tech related skills. Um, and and I, I don't want to dismiss that last bullet point. You have to actually make sure you have those skills. Don't just start making up stuff because you think it sounds good. Like because you're going to get called out on it if you don't. So don't embarrass yourselves. So LinkedIn automatically does a reverse chronology for you once you start putting in dates. All right. Have your specific job title. Now, on LinkedIn, I choose not to put the bullet points that are on my resume. I just give the job title and the time, right? Because when I'm crafting my targeted resume for the next job, right, then I can target those key points. So if, I'm not saying that's what you have to do, but if you're creating a targeted resume each time, for me, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna update the resume each time. I'm not gonna update the resume and the LinkedIn bullet points each time. So I just stick to like the name of the position, the company I work for, and the timeline. I don't give all of the, the meat about what I did in that bullet, okay? And it looks really good when you still have connections with previous employers on LinkedIn. It just shows that you've left the company on good terms, all right, gives that impression. So the best profiles do have these endorsements and recommendations, and at least one of them, right? And it's always better when you have it from someone that you've actually worked with or for, right? You can start gaining endorsements now. It, you don't have to wait till you get the first job post college. In fact, I would like if I was in a student group. I think Ada Sigma Delta, for instance, should be doing this for each other. Like the next meeting. I'd be like, this is our goal for the meeting. We're gonna help each other out and, and you know, endorse and make recommendations for each other. Right. So any additional information, um, you have to just keep it all current. Connect with alumni. Tigers look out for tigers. That's an easy way to just start building the number of connections you have. Right? And absolutely use LinkedIn to search for internships and job opportunities. There's a jobs tab on LinkedIn. A lot of students are like, oh wow, I didn't know that was there. All right, so you can use LinkedIn to find opportunities. 
So you can leverage your Facebook connections when you're doing LinkedIn, when you set it up, it can be like, oh, would you like to use all your Facebook connections? For me, I chose not to do that. Because I have some crazy family members that I don't want to be connected with in my professional brand LinkedIn profile. Right? Um, I'm gonna skim over this because I'm way over time. The hardest thing, the power of a retweet um, of someone's content, that is powerful if you're really trying to get in like with a company, like sharing what that company did or writing a little blurb and then sharing what they did. Then they people know who shared or liked their stuff. You pay attention to that, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's just something that, you, that's a trick to make someone aware of who you are if you're sharing. Any questions on this? I covered a lot on brand, went over a half hour, um, but yes. If you want to schedule, if, if you want to schedule, then you can like uh, do that and fill in all our LinkedIn stuff if we haven't done any of that really yet. Okay, so here's what I recommend. The question is, can you schedule an appointment with me to fill in all the LinkedIn stuff? In, in the interest of time, I would want you to go ahead and fill it in. And then if you want to eat, because I just know my appointment availability is not there, so I don't want to be like, yeah, set up an appointment, and then you're waiting forever. Um, set it up, send me an email, and say, hey, do you mind checking out my LinkedIn profile? All right. And there are certain students, even alumni, till this day, where I'm like, well, they'll post something, and there's a typo, and I'm messaging them, like, hey, hurry up and edit that typo. Because I check LinkedIn about three or four times a week. <laughs> 